going to do the ulnar nerve first. Extend your fingers out like that. First dorsal interosseous. Don't let me push you in. Abductor digiti minimi. Pull the fingers together. Three volar interosseous muscles. First, second, and third. Hold your fingers up like that. Lumbricals, I'm fixing proximally. Don't let me push you down. Pushing on the middle phalanx, don't let me push you down. Keep it up hard. Keep it up hard. Turn it over. Fixing the PIP joint, testing um, the flexor digitorum profundus of five. Curl. Curl. Good. Curl. Relax. Pull straight up. Flexor digiti minimi. Make a ring. Thumb, little finger. Don't let me push you down. Opponent's digiti minimi. Relax. Put your thumb straight on your index finger. Don't let me lift your thumb off. Adductor pollicis. Okay. And this is flexor carpi ulnaris, which is the last of the ulnar muscles. Abductor pollicis brevis. Thumb is over the palm and I'm pushing against it in this direction. Push straight down, don't bend your thumb. Don't bend your thumb. Opponent's pollicis. Turn it over, spread out like that. The two median lumbricals. Don't let me push you down. Keep it up hard. Keep it up hard. Good. Now, <clears throat> I've tested all the medians distal to the carpal tunnel. These are median forearm muscles. Relax. I'm extending on the DIP joint to prevent flexor digitorum profundus from being active. And pull. And he's pulling from the PIP joint. This is flexor digitorum superficialis. Pull. 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 It's very important to keep this hyperextended because if he does this, I'm testing more of flexor digitorum profundus and superficialis. Pull. And then flexor pollicis longus. Good. Pull up like this. Flexor carpi radialis. Let over. Don't let me turn you over. This is uh, pronator teres and flex your elbow. Don't let me turn you over. And this is pronator quadratus. Now the radials. I test uh, extensor digitorum in this way to get rid of the lumbricals. Don't let me push you down. You can do them all at once like this. Bend the thumb back like you're hitchhiking. Extensor pollicis longus. Extensor pollicis brevis, abductor pollicis longus, bend the wrist back, extensor carpi radialis, pull back, extensor carpi ulnaris, turn over like this, don't let me turn you over, and this is supinator, okay, come towards me again, now, don't let me pull you down with a pronated forearm, Pull. This is brachioradialis, and you can see the muscle tightening up. And come towards me a little more. Push away. This is triceps. Okay. Anterior deltoid. Posterior deltoid. And test them together like this. Put your arms at your side. All the way down. When I say so, lift away. Lift away. Supraspinatus, relax. Don't let me push you in. Keep it there. Good. Infraspinatus, pull up like this. Biceps, supinated forearm. Push down hard as you can. Latissimus dorsi. Push straight behind you. That's right. Rhomboids. Everything straight. Don't let me push you down. Good. And this is serratus anterior. To look for ulnar nerve subluxation, I put a finger over the medial epicondo and I feel for the ulnar nerve in the groove. And I flex the elbow. And I feel for an ulnar nerve moving underneath my finger, which 
doesn't happen here, although it's mobile. Um, I localize the cubital tunnel by finding the medial epicondyle and the olecranon, running my finger between them until I feel a little groove here where the two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris meet. And I push here and ask if there's any tenderness. Is it sore here? No. And then to Nell's sign, I tap about this hard. If you tap hard enough, you get a tenels on everybody. This is about right for distinguishing people with ulnar neuropathy from people who have no problem. Um, for carpal tunnel, I slightly extend the wrist, and I tap all the way from here into the palm. The carpal tunnel ends here. And ask if there's tingling. Phelan's test. We hold this position for one minute. And I ask patients to report whether they notice any unusual sensations. It's considered positive after a timed interval uh, if they report tingling and a median distribution. Okay. Now in this position, bring your um, hands in towards your cheek, towards your chin. And now I'm looking, this is an ulnar nerve uh, test similar to Phelan's test, an elbow flexion test. And this is done for one minute looking for either the appearance of or increase in pain at the elbow or the development of tingling in the little and ring fingers. Okay, now back. And this position is maintained for a minute. This is looking for thoracic outlet syndrome and patients will report either an increase in arm pain uh, or upper extremity pain uh, in the development of numbness and tingling. Sometimes you can also see loss of color in the hand. We'll listen right here for an infraclavicular brewing. I also feel for tenderness over the scalenes and over the pectoralis minor, which is right here. It's a common site for patients to be tender with thoracic outlet syndrome. Other problems that can mimic nerve entrapments, lateral epicondylitis, tennis elbow. I push over the lateral epicondyle looking for tenderness. The radial tunnel is about here as opposed to this finger which is tapping over the lateral epicondyle. And this is a site where the posterior interosseous nerve can be entrapped uh, and it can be tender uh, right at this site. Radiocutaneous nerve crosses over the radius uh, and can be sometimes entrapped and I look for And then some additional stress tests for carpal tunnel. Hold your hands in extension and do this a hundred times. And you count how many times somebody can do it before they develop tingling in a median distribution. The ulnar nerve is here. The medial head of flexor carpi ulnaris attaches to the medial epicondyle. If you push over the medial epicondyle in patients who have medial epicondylitis, there's tenderness, but there won't be tenderness over the ulnar nerve here. Vice versa, if they have ulnar neuropathy, but not medial epicondylitis. And these two conditions can be confused with each other.